Well, hey there, how you doing today? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Samin with you here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, well, as you can see, we've had a bit of an early snowstorm out west, so there is snow on the ground. It's happened a lot earlier than I thought it would, and it's very interesting and exciting. So, there is a new article in New Scientist magazine, and the title is Ball Lightning is So Strange It Might Come From Another Dimension. Initially, when I picked up this article, I thought, wow, they're going to start connecting the dots here a little bit, you know, with some of the topics we like to talk about in this channel, connecting ball lightning to other phenomena. I mean, I thought it might go in that direction. Um, but the more I read into this article, uh, it started with the experiences of an Italian physicist, uh, Andrea Aioli, Aiolo, and... Uh, it talked about how he saw this ball of light come into his room as a 10 year old and he got so interested, he started studying physics and still studies ball lightning to this day at the uh, Max Planck Institute in Germany. I thought that this article was gonna start moving to broaden the discussion into a wider range of phenomena. But alas, new scientist has decided to become old scientist. I mean, uh, they never went outside the uh, boundaries of normal classical electromagnetic explanations and in my view completely ignore the entire line of research from Nikola Tesla on forward. They start the article and have different examples of ball lightning. Let me just read you a sample. They say here that Aolo is uh, far from the first to claim a sighting. It's ball lightning has been repeated, repeatedly seen over the centuries. You know, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia claimed to have seen one gliding through a cathedral uh, during a late night storm as a child. Laura Ingalls Wilder, who wrote Little House on the Prairie, uh, saw some rolling down her stovepipe uh, during a storm. And, um, and then they say Nikola Tesla claimed to have created artificially produced ball lightning in his Colorado Springs lab. Now, despite such apparent sightings, though, concrete evidence remains hard to come by. All records are anecdotal and no image or video purporting to show the phenomena has stood up to scrutiny. Now, this is where I think they really fall flat here. Uh, first of all, we do have the Hestalin lights, which there are many good legitimate photographs of these phenomena. And as Bob Greener has showed us, they're sort of spiraling through the air, which is very consistent with the type of research that he's done in exotic vacuum objects. And that's really the whole point here, is there are newer scientists who have come along since Nikola Tesla to carry on the tradition to show that ball lightning isn't something that exists separately in and of itself. It's not just an extension of uh, lightning ordinary lightning that we see from thunderstorms. This article proceeds to look at it from the point of view of another type of lightning. Oh, gee, what could it be? But the whole line of research from Nikola Tesla up to the current day with many, many researchers shows us that ball lightning, balls of light can exist at very small scales, at microscopic scales too. And it's actually the same phenomena. And this is where the article really failed to produce any new information. Uh, from Nikola Tesla, we had the work of Winston Bostick from the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey in the 1950s. He was working for the Department of Defense and he ended up creating what the New York Times called in their article about the subject, uh, miniature galaxies uh, from a plasma gun in a test tube. He was able to produce these little spiral forms in a small scale, which look like, you know, galaxies and the New York Times kind of compared them. And maybe there's a relationship there. So Winston Bostick is one person who was able to continue on the work of Tesla to show that you can create uh, ball lightning at a very small scale. Then we had the work of uh, John Hutchinson from Canada, who we've talked about on this channel, Bob Greener at the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project has talked about Hutchinson, the fractured metal samples, which uh, show evidence of nuclear transmutation and things like that. Then uh, Kenneth Shoulders was brought onto the scene to try to explain the John Hutchinson 
phenomena he worked with Hal Putoff and he called these, first he called them charge clusters and then he called them exotic vacuum objects because as researchers have become convinced, these phenomena, the reason that they're in balls is they're held together. They're a, a cluster of electrons that are held together very tightly uh, by a magnetic monopole. And again, Bob Greener has shown these magnetic monopoles showing up in many different people's research. And let me just read you how many people have been involved with this research. This is just some of the people that have done research in this area of uh, condensed matter research, as it's known. Um, experiments have been done by persons starting with Tesla, then Hutchinson, Kenneth Shoulders, Fleischmann Pons, remember them from uh, the University of Utah, Salt Lake, who also rediscovered this phenomena. They called it cold fusion at the time. Uh, maybe it's slightly different phenomena, but the evidence was there that it, it exists as uh, we heard from Vittorio Violante at the SSC conference in San Francisco in 2015. He said they had reproduced the fleischmann pons effect in the ENA, ENEA research lab in Italy. Also Piantelli, Matsumoto, Celani, Adamenko, Relkar, Pakamov, uh, Lion, and Sapphire Project, many others who have been replicating what the sun does in free air in some cases for over 100 years. So this is really the point, folks, is just, this is just an example. The way that this New Scientist article limited ball lightning to a very narrow uh, range and history of research, uh, I'm sure that this is happening with all these other interesting topics that we've been exploring right now. It's been segmented, it's been stovepiped, and that's what the issue is. I don't think the New Scientist article is intentionally censoring this other line of research going back a hundred years. And if you look at Bob Greener's channel, I'll put one of the videos that he's recently done below. He called it the monopole clutch, which he presented to a Russian online conference about Leonard and ball lightning recently. Uh, it's extensive research with all of these researchers I just mentioned, finding very similar phenomena, strange radiation tracks, of these little exact uh, exotic vacuum objects, these plasmas dancing their way through materials. Again, these are quantum objects that interact with our classical reality at this physical scale at an electromagnetic level, but they're pulling their energy from the quantum vacuum field. And that's what makes it so fascinating. They're literally feeding off quantum energy, which gives them a huge amount of output of energy for the energy that you put in to get it going. And these folks argue that it is the same as ball lightning. It's just another variety that you can control and you can make yourselves. Now, this is an example, what New Scientist did here, of what I call, uh, what Alexander Unziker recently called on his channel, the retrospective narrative. And what that means is that you're looking at the past through a particular lens and you're ignoring all the other research. In the previous video I did a few weeks ago, uh, you can check it out here, uh, we looked at some of Einstein's early ideas, the variable speed of light, and how you and I never heard anything about this. We only heard about the constant speed of light because that's the retrospective narrative of physics currently is to look at one line of research and even with the same researcher to ignore all their other research. And this is what's been done in ball lightning in this case. So I imagine this is being done in many other topics. And what this would suggest is that phenomena that we look at here, including you know UFOs and strange phenomena around crop circles, uh, resonant viewing, e Bigfoot, even ghosts and haunting, something I've looked at occasionally, uh, that these topics are actually related. Now, I think there's an agenda here. I think these folks who are researching this in these more traditional magazines like New Scientist, and I've, I've been reading New Scientist for a long time, make no mistake about it. I've learned a lot from it, many interacting worlds, ideas, and others. Uh, so I've learned a lot there. At the same time, their retrospective narrative is to 
not connect these topics, perhaps it's in their interest to keep publishing articles about what's really going on here, which gives them a lot of articles to write and maybe people like me just keep subscribing forever. Is that is that what's going on here? Because I think these phenomena are actually connected and by ignoring all these researchers that we just mentioned with Lenner, uh, exotic vacuum objects and so forth, um, you don't make any progress. You're basically taking a topic and saying, well, we're only gonna look at the electromagnetic explanation and weather phenomena and you know a few lines of magnetism and so forth. We're not gonna look at this other line of research. So you're never gonna connect the dots and the you won't make any progress with this larger range of topics. Now, we know these topics are important because people who've worked for the US government have recently retired from it to tell us how important UFOs are, why we need to find out who's in those vehicles and what their intentions are and so forth. We all know what's going on here, TTSA and all the members of that particular organization. Um, but if we keep having this point of view that we're only gonna look through a narrow lens, we're not gonna look at the bigger picture. And the risk of not looking at the bigger picture is we're not gonna make any progress, we're not gonna figure it out. A lot of people are looking at this type of ball lightning as a type of energy source. And if you don't hook into that, you're really missing the biggest part of this uh, puzzle. So anyway, that's my thoughts about it. Let me know what you think. Put your comments in the box below. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Take care for now and uh, bye.